The deep ocean is a weird place. Like, really weird. If you were to sink past the sunlight zone, past the twilight zone, past the midnight zone, and into the crushing black of the deep ocean, you'd eventually find something impossible. A creature longer than a school bus, with eyes the size of dinner plates, and tentacles that could wrap around a house. This is the giant squid. We've all heard stories of the Kraken, a monster that could drag entire ships into the abyss. But the truth is stranger than the myth, because that legendary beast, it's real. And it's not alone. And something that most people don't know is that the giant squid isn't even the largest squid in the world. If you dive down even deeper, you will find a squid over two times heavier than the giant squid. And this creature is none other than the colossal squid. You might think they look similar at a glance, but they're not close relatives at all. And they didn't get huge for the same reasons. These are two creatures that should never have existed and how evolution, somehow, built the same monster twice. Even though these are the only truly massive squids in the world, to most people, they look nearly identical. Just two absurdly big noodles with too many arms. But to anyone who knows squids, and for some reason that's me, these two species couldn't be more different. Both share a distant ancestor, a primitive oegopsid squid that lived roughly 60 to 100 million years ago near the end of the Cretaceous. Back when dinosaurs ruled the land, early squids ruled the deep. But here's the catch. Squids are terrible at leaving fossils. They're basically living water balloons. No bones, just soft tissue that vanishes within weeks after death. The only piece that sometimes lasts? The beak, made of layered chitin, the same tough material as insect shells. If that beak gets buried fast enough, it can survive for millions of years and leave us a clue that a squid was once there. Sometime after the dinosaurs, that early Oegopsid lineage split. One branch gave rise to the Archituthidae, the family of the giant squid. The other evolved into the Cranchiidae, the glass squids, which include the colossal squid. So yes, giant and colossal share an order, Oegopsida, but different families, different genera, different species. On paper, they're distant cousins. Here's the twist. Both lineages ended up enormous, but not because they inherited size from some common mega ancestor. They grew big independently, a textbook case of convergent evolution. That's what we call it when unrelated animals face similar problems and evolve similar solutions. Nature basically looked at the deep ocean twice and said, Ah, big squid works. Let's ship it. But if evolution copied the giant squid blueprint twice, why are they still so different? To answer that, we need to talk about where they live. Because environment is everything down there. Giant squids roam deep, temperate, and subtropical oceans across much of the world. They typically hang out in the midnight zone, the bathypelagic depths, where there's no sunlight at all, just pressure, cold, and the occasional bioluminescent blink. Their gigantism is tied to deep sea gigantism, a tendency for animals in the deep to trend large, likely because of slower metabolisms, fewer predators, and the need to store energy and oxygen for long, stealthy hunts. Colossal squids, on the other hand, haunt the southern ocean around Antarctica. They're found even deeper on average, down into the freezing, high-pressure layers where life moves slowly and calories are precious. Their size is driven mainly by polar gigantism, an adaptation to near-freezing waters where a larger body helps conserve heat and energy. So while one species got huge to handle the depth, the other got huge to handle the cold. Different oceans, different pressures. Same result. Monsters. Now, gigantism isn't just about looking cool in a museum diagram. Being massive solves a ton of problems for squids. Energy storage. Big bodies carry more reserves for long stretches between meals. Oxygen economy. Larger squids can store more oxygen and manage longer dives. Thermal stability. Size helps buffer against cold, especially in polar waters. Predator dynamics. 
At a certain scale, you stop being food and start being a problem. But the oceans they live in shaped them into different machines. The giant squid is a scalpel, long, sleek, streamlined, built for ambush speed. Most weigh a few hundred pounds, call it 400 to 600 pounds for many adult specimens, but their total length can reach 45 feet because those two feeding tentacles are ridiculously long. Those tentacles end in suction cups lined with serrated teeth, perfect for clamping onto fast, slippery prey like grenadiers and other deep sea fishes. And yes, sometimes other squids. The colossal squid is a sledgehammer, shorter relative to the giant's total length, but thick, heavy, and massively muscled. Some of the biggest estimates put them over 1,300 pounds, which makes them the heaviest invertebrates on Earth. Instead of teeth on their cups, they wield rotating hooks. Think grappling anchors that twist into flesh. Their prey includes heavyweights like the Antarctic toothfish. The Colossal's strategy isn't chase. It's wait, ambush, don't let go. Both species use jet propulsion, drawing water into a muscular mantle cavity and blasting it out through a siphon. It's the same trick tiny squids use. These are just the XXL versions. The giant squid's body plan prioritizes speed. Estimates put top bursts in the tens of miles per hour. The Colossal can jet too, but it's more of a lunge than a sprint. All that mass doesn't love drag. If you've ever wondered why the giant squid feels like a long, ghostly ribbon, and the Colossal feels like a submarine with claws, this is why. Same order, different worlds, different engineering. There's one piece of engineering they do share, a mouth weapon that makes perfect sense in a world with no walls, the beak. In the midwater void, there's nothing to pin prey against. No rock, no sea floor, just free floating panic. Squids need a tool that lets them tear food apart in open water. Enter the beak, layered chitin that forms a razor edged upper and lower half working like a parrot's beak scaled for nightmares. It slices through flesh and tendon with alarming efficiency. Inside, a radula, a tongue studded with backward-pointing microscopic teeth, acts like a conveyor grinder, rasping food down the hatch. It's elegant, brutal, and exactly what midwater predators need. And those famous eyes? They're not just big, they're record-breaking big. Giant squids and colossal squids have some of the largest eyes of any animal, nearly basketball sized. In pitch darkness, size buys sensitivity. Those eyes can detect the faintest bioluminescent flashes, like the glow kicked up by a hunting sperm whale, which might be the difference between escaping and becoming whale fuel. So let's stack them side by side, because the contrast is the point. Body plan, giant equals long and streamlined. Colossal equals compact and thick. Arms and tentacles. Giant equals suction cups with serrated rims. Colossal equals swiveling hooks and robust armature. Habitat. Giant equals widespread temperate and subtropical deep oceans. Colossal equals Antarctic and subantarctic deep. Depth layers. Giant equals midnight zone depths. Colossal equals deeper average dives into colder, higher pressure layers. Mass. Giant equals long but relatively lighter. Colossal equals shorter but much heavier. Two predators, two solutions, one outcome. Apex status in their lanes. Now for the tragic poetry. These two titans will never meet. Not once in Earth's history, as far as we can tell, have giant and colossal squids crossed paths. Their ranges barely overlap, and their preferred depth bands are different enough that they might as well live on separate planets. The giant squid rules the open, temperate deep. The colossal owns the Antarctic darkness. They are the kings of adjacent kingdoms, each unaware that the other even exists. Which is probably fine, because if they did meet, the greeting would be, Hi, are you edible? There is one animal that knows both exist, the only predator that routinely hunts either, the sperm whale. Sperm whales are the deep ocean's battering rams. They can dive for well over an hour, navigating by echolocation, blasting clicks so powerful they can map the darkness for hundreds of meters. Down there, their favorite menu item is squid. 
and the evidence is written on their faces. Sperm whales often carry circular scars from giant squid suckers and ragged grooves that look suspiciously like they were carved by hooks. Inside whale stomachs, scientists find piles of squid beaks, the indigestible calling cards of past meals. Some stomachs contain beaks from both giant and colossal squids, proving that whales shop in both aisles. Here's the cold part of convergent evolution. When nature builds two animals in similar ways, it can hand them the same weakness. For giant and colossal squids, that weakness is a 50-ton mammal with lungs, sonar, and a dive profile that laughs at the abyss. The result is an arms race. Squids trend larger, stealthier, and more elusive. Whales push deeper, hold their breath longer, and refine their acoustic hunting. Nobody can stop evolving without paying for it. Now, quick myth check on the Kraken lore became science thing, because it's actually a neat arc. For a long time we had only dead specimens, beaks and whale stomachs, bits washed ashore, and rare carcasses hauled up in nets. The giant squid was a ghost. Then, in the early 2000s, researchers finally photographed one alive in the deep. A few years later, video footage appeared. The colossal squid followed a similar path to credibility, first as strange hooks and beaks in damaged whales, later as whole animals hauled from Antarctic waters on long lines meant for toothfish. Piece by piece, the monster story became a biology lesson. And the more we've learned, the weirder these animals get. Let's talk buoyancy, because the colossal squid belongs to the glass squid family, Cranchiidae, which plays a different physics game than most cephalopods. Many Cranchiids neutralize buoyancy using ammonium-rich fluids in their tissues, less dense than seawater, so they can hover with minimal effort. If you've ever seen a glass squid photo with a translucent body and big staring eyes, that's the family. The colossal isn't literally see-through like its smaller cousins, but it likely uses a similar chemistry trick to float without flapping, conserving precious calories in a world where sprinting is expensive. Metabolism is another deep sea reality check. Cold water slows everything. Digestion, growth, movement. That's why energy efficiency is the colossal squid's whole brand. Less chasing, more waiting. Fewer swings, bigger payoff. Meanwhile, the giant squid lives where more prey is on the move, so it leans toward burst motion, long reach, and ambush runs. And about those eyes again, because they're genuinely wild. In the dimmest depths, any splash of light, say, a disturbed school of bioluminescent plankton, can be a billboard screaming, Predator, incoming. Having giant, light-hungry pupils means a squid can detect that billboard earlier. If you're a giant squid and you spot the bioluminescent wake of a whale, that extra second can be the difference between escape and free ride to whale town. Let's zoom out. Convergent evolution isn't rare. It's everywhere once you look for it. Sharks and dolphins evolved the same torpedo shape for efficient swimming, even though one is a fish and the other a mammal. Bats and birds both evolved wings. Bats by stretching skin across elongated fingers. Birds by developing feathers and lightweight skeletons. In Australia, the thylacine, a marsupial, ended up looking like a wolf, despite being as related to actual wolves as we are to kangaroos. Evolution doesn't copy on purpose. It runs similar problems through different bodies and sometimes lands on the same solutions. The deep ocean favors stealth, efficiency, and reach. Twice now, squids have answered with get big, get weird, get scary. The giant squid leaned into speed plus suction. The colossal leaned into mass plus hooks. Different materials, same blueprint. Apex Midwater Predator. So, could we get a third giant squid species someday? Could the ocean run this weird experiment again? Honestly, yes, if the conditions line up. Recipe. Perpetual darkness. High pressure. Low temperatures. Scarce, high-value prey. And a long, long time. And there are candidates already inching that way. The Dana octopus squid, not an octopus, just the name, is short and thick for a squid and can weigh a few hundred pounds. The robust clubhook squid reaches impressive lengths and uses serious armature of its own. 
None are truly giant or colossal, but the trend lines, larger bodies, deeper ranges, heavier armament, are there. Given enough time, a new lineage could push past big and into legend. Would that new monster look like the giant squid? Long, sleek suction cups? Or like the colossal, hooked, heavy, built for ambush? Depends on where it evolves. If it's born in cold, calorie-poor, polar depths, expect tanks. If it's forged in open, temperate, deep seas with fast prey, expect sprinters. The environment writes the blueprint. Now, because I know some of you like the gritty details, let's touch reproduction and life cycles briefly, because they also help explain size and rarity. Deep sea squids are notoriously hard to study alive. What we do know suggests slow growth compared to shallow water species, with reproduction likely happening once near the end of life. Females produce enormous numbers of eggs, and in some oegopsids, the eggs are embedded in gelatinous masses that drift. The deep sea's low temperatures slow development, which could mean longer larval stages and lower encounter rates with mates. That scarcity alone can select for larger body size. Bigger animals can range farther, store more energy, and wait out droughts of opportunity. There's also risk management. In a world where you might go a long time between meals, having a big frame gives you black box redundancy. Oxygen in the blood, glycogen in the muscle, fats in the mantle. All of that buys you time. Time to find a mate. Time to avoid a whale. Time to not die today. Let's loop back to the showdown that never happens. Giant versus Colossal, because it's the thought experiment everyone wants. If you put one of each in a neutral arena, please don't. The Giant has reach and speed. The Colossal has mass and hooks. The Giant could try to jab and snatch, going for a quick disable. The Colossal would try to absorb, lock, and grind. But the real world never stages this fight. Their arenas are different. Their playbooks are tuned to different prey, pressures, and temperatures. They're champions of specialization, not generalists looking for cross-division belts. And that's the real point. Evolution didn't make two versions of the same animal by accident. It made two different answers to two different questions that just happened to rhyme. So what do we make of these two titans? The giant squid is the ocean's long-range assassin. A ribbon of muscle and nerve endings, a pair of reaching tentacles bristling with serrated suction, and eyes that turn darkness into data. It's longer, lighter, more widespread, and built to strike fast. The colossal squid is the ocean's armored brawler, a dense, hovering mass with swiveling hooks, big muscles for big prey, and a metabolism tuned to weight, then end it. It's heavier by far king of the invertebrates, and a specialist in a kingdom of ice. They're not myth, they're models. Evolutionary designs that work so well, the ocean printed them at scale. And somewhere below the last dregs of sunlight, they're still out there, writing new data points into a story we're only just learning to read. Will there be a third giant? Given enough time, pressure, and darkness? Probably. Because the deep doesn't stop experimenting, it just takes longer between prototypes. Until then, the crown for the ocean's heaviest invertebrate stays with the colossal squid, and the title for longest squid shape stays with the giant. Two legends, two kingdoms, one planet that still hides monsters. And maybe those old sailors weren't so wrong after all, they just used a different word for data. <laughs>